It's Linda Yawn for 90.9 WRCJ and Detroit Public Television. And it is my distinct honor to talk with the president of the Detroit Jazz Festival Foundation and the artistic director of the Detroit Jazz Festival and the director of jazz studies at Wayne State University and a wonderful friend Chris Collins. Thank you, Linda. That was so sweet. That that warms me right up. Well, we're talking about a really special friend to you, to me, to people all around the world, for Pete's sake, and that is the one and only Gretchen Volade. Gretchen Volade. You know, um, years ago, I, uh, I used the term angel of jazz in some interview, and I don't think... Uh, I don't think we can come up with anything much better. In fact, uh, the way I've been thinking about it is our, our angel of jazz finally got her wings that she well deserves. And uh, I, I don't use the term lightly because, you know, that's uh, uh, the, there was a purity in Gretchen Blade in what she did and how she treated people and how she perceived a pathway to realize a vision and a dream of not only expanding the jazz scene in Detroit, and I'm, I'm not even going to touch upon all the things she's just done for Detroit, culturally, in, in, in many ways that many people do not know. She's, she's an incredible champion for our city. But in the jazz world, in addition to just expanding jazz opportunities for artists and for patrons, she had a vision of, of pulling down barriers to participation you know, really making it an invitation to everyone to be a part of this art and this music. And the purity of that was displayed in how she did it and in the selfless way in which she contributed not only her financial assets, but her human resource and her presence, as you know, at the club, at the festival, available to artists, available to talk to people. She did not she did not hide. She wanted to be right in the middle of it. I really thought that was quite lovely. You know, and uh, as as a festival goer, uh, you'd see her there, and she was in a pair of jeans and a t-shirt and a little jacket, <laughs> you know, just like everybody else. And she did not expect to be treated like a prima donna. She nope. wanted to hang. You know, I, I was trying to explain to a, uh, in another interview, a, a non-jazz reporter, what, what made the vision, what made the dream so unique. And, you know, um, the, the, through history, uh, you know, there have been wonderful philanthropists and wonderful patrons of the art that have helped supply assets that allow artists to do what they do. But, you know, in Gretchen's case, she, she, she never did it to... Uh, 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 cement her name in history. She didn't do it as a a, a backdoor uh, funder to some for-profit entity. She never did it for political gain. It was as exactly as she said. And in fact, when I first met her, which was as a musician, I can tell you that it, it you know, like so many, you know, we didn't. When she showed up, we didn't know Gretchen Vallee, not in the jazz world, and. Um, you know, Detroit, it takes a while to develop trust because there's a lot of stuff going on and you want to get to know people and understand if they're if they're the real deal. And uh, but as time went by and I got closer to her and I saw her in action and I saw her dealing with individuals and I experienced her 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 generosity, uh, you know, on an individual level, on a group level and on an institutional level um, and and just saw. Uh, uh, her unfold in the way she not only approached the, but followed up and made sure that things were the way they should be. I realized, my gosh, she's the real deal. There, there's no backstory here. She just really wants to provide opportunities for artists and patrons. She wants to expand the jazz scene. She wants to see it continue forever. And she wants everyone to be able to experience this music. In fact, it's a crazy thing, but no one would ever call it gross point an underserved community. And yet, when she brought the Dirty Dog Jazz Cafe to Kircheville and Gross Point, she brought a club and a real jazz club to an area that 
didn't have one. No. You know, it wasn't available there. And and it brought this whole sensibility to that side of town that that brought people together from the city and from the suburbs and introduced a music that is, you know, uh, intrinsically genetically linked to the culture of Detroit, to Gross Point. And it's, it, it, it was another kind of strange example to talk about, but she, she once again, inviting everyone to the party. This is for all of us. This is music of the people. It's a great art, but it belongs to us and we should all be able to enjoy it. And of course, the pinnacle of that is insisting that the Detroit Jazz Festival stay free. Because it's has exactly. been for That is the pinnacle. I'm going to read what Danilo Perez wrote about Gretchen. And um, I want to thank my friends at Groove Marketing who found this quote from uh, Danilo. And they are the people who did uh, national publicity and marketing for Mac Avenue Records. Danilo Perez writes, over the years, I knew her and we had fun exchanges after several performances I did at the Detroit Jazz Festival. She even detailed the nuances of my compositions. It was unbelievable how direct she was. During a performance I did as a duet with Wayne Shorter in 2017 at the club, the Dirty Jog Jazz Cafe, when he was Detroit's resident artist, I introduced her to Wayne Shorter in the dressing room and the conversation got deep immediately and centered around the power of the arts and the importance mm -hmm. of sharing them around the world. There were also stories of 52nd Street jazz club scene era of New York. I was impressed to be a part of this special moment and felt honored and privileged to be a part of the Mac Avenue Records label. She loved music for real and understood the importance of opening creative spaces to support musicians in preserving rich Detroit jazz history. I was so impressed with how deeply immersed she was in creating music in the therapeutic and transformative power of music and her dedication to songwriting was incredibly inspiring. Her vision, passion, drive, and commitment to this music is, has made her one of the world leading arts philanthropists, visionaries, and generous people. Her record label is committed to expanding and sharing global jazz music. I'm eternally grateful for her support in creating some of my most creative and ambitious projects. Daniel oh. Lopez. Yep, yep. That's, uh, that is the sentiment today. You know, my goodness. Uh, you know, people know her around the world. I, I probably told you when we take the All-Stars to Japan or to different parts of Europe or South America. I mean, when we talk about Gretchen, people cheer. They understand all around the world. I I, I had uh, two two young guys, two uh, uh, jazz fans in Japan. Uh, we were playing at a club in Tokyo, and they came up and they're talking to me. And they both had T-shirts with Gretchen Blade's face on them. They had made them because they uh, they 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 associated her directly with the with the uh, you know the, the 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 moving the needle on this art form. And I I think that is truly. Uh, not what she ever, you know, she never asked for, but her actions created that level of love, respect, and recognition. And as you know, at the end of this year, uh, the plan is to open the Gretchen C. Valet Jazz Center on Wayne State's campus in Detroit, a very special uh, facility in, in the entire country, specifically designed for jazz. And she did that because jazz artists play in clubs, which are great, you know, 50, 60 seats, or they play at the festival, thousands and thousands of people through a big sound system. She wanted to create a theater where uh, jazz musicians, if they wanted to do something in that realm, they didn't have to go to, uh, you know, uh, uh, an, uh, an orchestral oriented theater with 2000 seats to fill, but, you know, 360 seats in the main hall, specifically acoustically designed for jazz. Every seat in the room is great. That's her goal because she wanted it to be available for artists like Danilo and others to be invited to do those things in their mind that they may think, bah, there just isn't a venue for this. There just isn't a, 
there's a place for this Gretchen saying, oh, yes, there is. It's in Detroit, and it's part of the Gretchen Boy Jazz Center. It's part of the Detroit Jazz Festival, and it will continue to be. And that's uh, that's that's heart and soul uh, who she's always been. You know, I, I often tell a, a funny little story that connects with this. Uh, it was around Christmas time, early in our relationship. And I saw people giving her gifts. You know, we'd sit at lunch, people bring her a gift, you know, this, that. And uh, uh, after a couple of years, I finally said, Gretchen, what can I do for you? You know, I, my wife and I would always try to find something sweet, you know, a nice scarf or something, or when we were overseas, something that, that was interesting. But I want to do, should we take you out? Can we take you out to a meal? I mean, what can we do that would be meaningful? She said, you can do two things for me. She said, Chris, keep the Detroit Jazz Festival free and keep the Detroit Jazz Festival jazz. And you know what that means. That's a that's a, a whole history and legacy and, and language behind that statement. And I thought to myself, that's I, I've come to believe that is what she wanted. She she desired nothing more than that level of of opportunity, excellence, uh, uh, dedication to the art, and and accessibility for everybody. And she knew that that would lay the foundation for all the other beautiful things that like Daniel speaks of and many of our patrons speak of that can come from the music if you set the if you set the the, the foundation correctly all the other things will will grow from that fertile soil and uh, boy did she put it down for us boy boy she threw the gauntlet at you but Chris how wonderful it is that you're running with it and that you're going to keep her legacy alive along with her family and along with all of the volunteers for the Detroit Jazz Festival, the whole Mac Avenue Records roster, we're never going to forget her. We knew somebody very special. Oh yeah, we. I, I, I'm sure you will agree. It's 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 less than a once in a lifetime opportunity to know and actually, you know, associate and breathe the air of a Gretchen Villain. In fact, like so many things in Detroit. We have these very unique things in all the world, and it, it's difficult to always recognize it when it's so close to home. But around the world, and you know, I travel as a musician playing at many, many festivals and many, many cities. There's no one like Gretchen Belade, and there's nothing like what she's accomplished and continue to accomplish and set the stage to propagate from here forward. And, and as you said, you know, it's our job now to carry that dream and that vision forward. And I'm here to tell you, I, I have no other purpose in this part of the industry. I, I mean, I'm a musician and a professor at Wayne. I, I'm very happy. I'm, I'm not looking to create a, a lifelong, endless career in, in the jazz festival industry. I'm in the, the Detroit Jazz Festival because of Gretchen Vallee's purity of vision and the dream that she shared with me. It aligned with what I believe is what every artist and every, every uh, lover of jazz wants to see happen with this music and boy you're right to be a part of it to be engaged in it and to have that in your in your life in your psyche it changes you it lifts you up and it's it it it, it shows you it, it shows you a light that may not have been visible before Gretchen you know pulled the veil back and she really did she really did oh wow here's Galen McKinney's wish. Enjoy the big jam in the next realm, Gretchen. There are some heavy hitters there, and you're most welcome. <laughs> That's beautiful. I love it. I love it. Oh, my gosh. Uh, well, yeah, a lot of emotion. A lot of emotion right now. A lot of emotion. Yeah. But, you yep. know, for jazz fans in Detroit, and all around the world, we love Gretchen Vallade. We send her up. We bless her. Indeed, and we, we do. Thank you for what you do. Uh, believe me, it's an it's the honor is mine. The honor is mine to serve the city, to serve Gretchen's vision, and to just be a part of the lineage. It started with you know Mayor Mayor Young and uh, and Bob McCabe forty four years ago to to keep that wheel spinning boy that's just that's an honor that's an honor all right bless you bless you too linda thank you and uh have a happy new year and uh i know you'll keep uh, gretchen in your heart and her dream on your lips 
and uh, share it with your listeners and your incredible fans and audience. You are you are a champion of this music, as as I've said to you many times. And uh, it is it is the ecosystem of all of us that made Gretchen's vision possible. And I think seeing people like yourself and that that ecosystem of artists and radio personalities and writers and all this stuff that the creativity that exists in the city is what gave her the 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 motivation and the optimism that this could be done that this could be done you can find more at onedetroitpbs.org or subscribe to our social media channels and sign up for our one detroit newsletter